I want to get your thoughts on... The, the, we keep hearing that Peter Dutton is on the cusp of announcing a lot more detail about the Coalition's nuclear energy policy. Now, obviously, uh, I've talked a lot uh, and investigated a lot the role that nuclear energy could play in this country, and I think the prospects are very good. But he can't get anywhere without a state government cooperating with him. And at the moment, there's wall-to-wall -wall Labor governments on the, in the mainland states. So, do you see this as being a major obstacle for any sensible progress on nuclear energy? Of course, Chris. I think um, the fact that nuclear is being politicised is going to force this issue to be a stumbling block, full stop. And if the government just lifted the current prohibition of nuclear energy, we can actually have an open discussion about the facts of nuclear and do the investigations and analysis of the benefits of it across Australia so that states can understand where they can benefit from, both in energy security, but as well as economically. There are some states that are heavily reliant on the resources sector and need to find ways to provide power to those parts of the sector. That is clean, that is reliable, that is secure. So uh, I definitely think there will be an issue in politicising this as part of an energy policy, but in lifting the current prohibitions, we'd be able to actually have a decent discussion, education and analysis of nuclear for Australia. Yeah, now we're aware, of course, that federal law that bans nuclear energy, that could be overturned easily if a federal parliament decided to do so. But is it all of the states also have different laws that ban nuclear energy or, so, or just some of them? I know some of the states, for instance, have a ban on even exploring for uh, uranium mines. Yeah, you're right, Chris. So there are states like New South Wales that have current legislative bans on uh, uranium mining and exploration, as well as power generation. Now, a couple of these states did do some exploratory work a few years ago to see whether it was worth overturning the ban. All of them came back and said, we're not going to overturn the ban if it's still illegal federally. So it, it makes no sense for states to do the investigation if it's a legislative ban at the federal level. So uh, removing that, allowing the states to then have a look at their own legislative restrictions and the opportunities in their state will then allow us to actually have a decent look at nuclear opportunities. Well, I want to show you an exchange between two of the key players yesterday and get your thoughts on it. Let's start with something that Peter Dutton said, and this is the clip that was highlighted by the Climate and Energy Minister, Chris Bowen. If you've got communities where uh, you've got uh, the small modular reactor operating, you've got less distribution costs, and at the moment the government system only works with the rollout of 28,000 kilometres of poles and wires by 2030. It's not going to happen. Uh, and the fact is that, uh, it, as we've seen internationally, those regions end up attracting a greater industrial base. So that is, those small businesses and those manufacturing businesses move closer to a small modular reactor because they can get electricity at a cheaper cost. Yeah, now Chris Bowen says that's wrong. He reposted on social media and he says, uh, Peter Dutton said today that around the world, businesses and manufacturing are moving to be closer to small modular nuclear reactors. Where is this happening, Mr Dutton? Because no commercial small modular reactor exists. So Peter Dutton might have been speaking mm. prospectively there. Is, is it the case that we that small modular reactors are in fact only um, in uh, only in, 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 in really the proposal form at this stage? There aren't any actually operating commercially? No, there actually are small modular reactors operating commercially. China uh, operationalised an SMR last year. They also have another one that's in its final stages of construction due to power their industrial base in the grid in 2026 from memory. Uh, there's also uh, Russian-based small modular reactors that are currently floating vessels that have been operational. So the technology exists, it works. The issue comes to the scalability of it. And this is where I truly believe that energy policy has to be bipartisan because you have to invest long term. And in the case of small modular reactors, it's about building lots of the same fleet of reactors 
to get the cost savings in the manufacture of it. So uh, I think SMRs are yeah, a great uh, opportunity. Yeah. Now, when we talk about uh, the small nuclear reactors that power nuclear submarines and that will one day power Australian nuclear submarines, are, are they, in effect, small modular reactors themselves? Yeah, they are. So, small modular reactors, the technology has existed since the 50s when the US Navy put small reactors into vessels and submarines. So, the technology is not questioned here. It is purely the economics. And if you keep playing around with fleets of SMRs, of course, you're not going to get the economic scale of them because you're swapping and changing systems. So this is where uh, countries that are investing in SMR technology are looking at uh, one fleet to be able to roll across their country so that they can get those horizontal scale savings uh, when they connect them to the grid. Jasmine, thanks for joining us. I appreciate it. That's Jasmine Diab, who's with Global Nuclear Security Partners.